Um, what we're working on uh, for the past few weeks is uh, banding Canada geese throughout southern Manitoba. The biggest thing is getting birds uh, off the water. So we use uh, kayaks and um, small uh, motorized uh, little airboat. And uh, once we get the birds off the water, we just use uh, individuals to sort of surround them and slowly corral them and walk them into uh, a lattice net that we use. Uh, so sort of a lattice uh, corral that's set up that has a decoy in it. Um, the urban geese are pretty easy to capture. Uh, the uh, rural geese that haven't been around people as much and sort of aren't used to them are a lot more challenging to catch. They tend to run, run you know, quickly. So the birds respond really quickly to the kayaks. Um, a lot of times if you have uh, bird places where we've banded before, the birds are realize what's going on. Some of these birds have been recaptured you know, many, many times over the last 15 years or so. So uh, they have a pretty good idea of what we're doing once we pick, pick the kayaks up and start walking to the water. So. Over the last you know, number of years, we've become pretty proficient at it, working with a bunch of different agencies, mostly uh, with uh, us and, uh, and the province, and uh, have a really good core of experienced folks that come out and help with this annually. So pretty smooth process. Do somewhere around 1,500 birds per year, all the way up to sometimes 3,000 in some years, depending on how productivity is. This year, productivity is fairly low, so our numbers will reflect that, but our totals are mostly driven by adults. That's our objective is to band at least 400 adults, which uh, we achieved uh, this year. So yeah, successful year. Really what we're doing is trying to get a marked sample of birds every year. So you can think of this sort of as the initial uh, marking in the, in the study. And then you can think of all the recoveries that we get through hunters and other individuals that find birds dead as a, as a recovery process. So this is sort of half the work of the project. The other half is carried out by hunters uh, predominantly, and we're really grateful for that. So we also get recaptures. Um, we use both uh, the recoveries and the recaptures to estimate survival rates, and predominantly the, the recoveries from hunters to estimate harvest rates. And that's really how we monitor the status of the population. We use the harvest rates uh, in our management. Uh, you know, towards reaching our management objectives. So with this population, we're really trying to increase the harvest rates. Uh, really want to get them above 15%. Uh, right now on adults, they're about 10%. So we're taking some different steps to try to do that. Uh, one of them is by having a special spring conservation season for these birds. We've been banding every year since 2009. Prior to that, there was birds banded uh, all over Southern Manitoba, going back through till uh, you know the 1960s in some earlier efforts. And then there was sort of sporadic efforts in Winnipeg, but starting in 2009, we've started banding a large number of birds and then doing so every year since then. So yeah, it's become a kind of a long-term monitoring program of ours. Yeah, these are these are amazing data sets. Yeah, you know, more than 10,000 banded birds and uh, 4,000 recaptures, you know, throughout this program. So plus all the hunter recoveries, right? So yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. There's all sorts of new technology we have for monitoring movements of birds, so GPS transmitters mounted in various ways. We're using these uh, light level geolocators, which are a, a small little battery, non-transmitting archival device. So they're logging light levels, and then we're using uh, the time associated with those light levels to estimate locations for these birds with a fair amount of error, you know, probably somewhere around 50 kilometers of error on a you know, on a point basis. So they're not super accurate, but um, they're really uh, very useful for our purposes. We can deploy a large number of them. We have a lot of recaptures and, and uh, recoveries from this population. So in this population, we get around half of them back over the, you know, the, the life of the, the goose when they're deployed. And we're using them, uh, and we've used them in the past to look at differences in migration chronology between different populations. And that's how we timed our spring conservation season for this population. We deployed these devices on birds in northern Manitoba, uh, birds on southwest Baffin Island, small cacklers, and then this population and sort of found a sweet spot where this, this population is present uh, during March and the first uh, part of April. And those other two populations, which are not the subject of you know, additional harvest pressure, pressure uh, are, are not present. So we're deployed a bunch more this year uh, to sort of just monitor that over time. Um, just because you do get some annual differences in spring migration, mostly driven by, by weather. 
um, and so it's just sort of adding to our uh, to our data set to in, to you know ensure that our season timing is appropriate. So another thing that you might see in the videos is um, us doing some uh, swabbing for surveillance of avian influenza. So we we take a sample from the cloaca of the bird and another one from the, the um, uh, mouth of the bird, and uh, we combine those in one vial, and they're analyzed by. Uh, the, uh, provincial vet lab and we use that uh, just to monitor prevalence in the population. We've been doing that for a few years. Uh, this year uh, we have a uh, highly pathogenic uh, avian influenza strain that's circulating so there's a little bit more interest in having a, you know, a strong sample from that. And we also did some pond sampling uh, in the spring of uh, fecal matter from Canada geese at about 100 ponds in Winnipeg and um, we did not find any, uh, any high path uh, strains during that work. We did find some low kind of low path background avian flu which is circulating in the population annually. But that's why you'll see us wearing uh, gloves during the banding and uh, just taking some precautions like spraying down all of our equipment between drives and making sure everything is sanitized uh, when we're moving between places. So wearing these coveralls, spraying down our pants, spraying down our boots, it's just a little bit extra precautions this year. Low concern, uh, low human risk concern. It is having it is having some effect on birds this year, especially some seabirds. And uh, I mean, I think there's still a lot to be learned about what effect it's had on different populations. So we did do some swabbing of snow geese from hunter shot birds during the spring. So we have a reference for uh, spring migration in that population. And then we go up to the Arctic to band. We'll be collecting about another thousand samples from birds all throughout uh, Arctic Canada. Uh, to look at how prevalence has changed over the summer and before those birds interact with uh, uh, birds in the south during uh, their fall migration. So, well, a lot to be learned on, on that front. My name is uh, Frank Bolin. I'm a biologist with uh, Canadian Wildlife Service uh, working on uh, migratory birds.